The biggest disadvantage of Adobe is because it's made of a lot of little separate units, which are kind of stuck together with mud. But the, the, there's no real continuity. There's no tensile connection between all those different units. If you get a big shake or the ground moves, in an earthquake or something like that, there's a tendency for those units to shift and come apart. And in worst case circumstance for the building to collapse. So Adobe of the three major load bearing techniques is probably the least, the least strong in earthquake conditions. And Cobb, the actual ingredients and mixture in a cob building can be very, very similar to what goes into an adobe structure. It's once again a mixture of clay and sand and straw. And there's some huge advantages to that relative to the, the other techniques. One is we don't need any forms. We're just building and sculpting our walls in place as we go. You can do sculptural stuff with concrete, etc., etc. But to do a, a, a curved sculptural concrete building, you first need to build a curved form, which is fairly technically difficult. To get the same, to achieve the same result out of Cobb, you don't need any special tools and you don't need any special training. So it's very, very easy for people without much training and without much technical background to achieve really spectacular results. In fact, it's uh, it's practically inevitable. <laughs> I've almost never seen anybody build anything out of cob that wasn't beautiful. So that's pretty remarkable in and of itself. The other advantage, the other significant advantage besides the sculptural um, qualities of cob, is that if it's if you build carefully you needn't have any seams, any weak joints in your entire structure. So the ideal is you're always adding the new cob onto the wall before the cob underneath it is completely dry. And you're able to sew using either your fingers or using a tool that we call a copper's thumb, which is a worked piece of wood. You're able to sew the new cob into the layer of wet sticky cob underneath it. And you're able to get very, very good connection and good adhesion between those layers. I haven't been myself to Africa, but I've seen photographs where one of the solutions is to build a, your each course of cob sort of triangular in section, actually kind of like an upside down heart shape in section. And then the next upside down heart shape locks itself in place on top of the previous course. So there are certainly ways around the, the poor connection that you tend to get with coursing. But for, you know, just as a general statement, I'd say Cobb has the potential to be much stronger in earthquake conditions than either Adobe, than especially Adobe, because you don't have all those inherent weak points in the seams between the different courses. You can build, you know, any of these techniques you can build with very, very few tools. So with Adobe, you know, really all you need is a form and you can, and you can do the rest of it just, you know, a shovel is helpful and a wheelbarrow is helpful and a hose is helpful. With rammed earth, it's pretty much the same. You need a form and a tamper. With Cobb, the tools that you actually need to do it are even fewer. Pretty much just do Cobb with a stick or a shovel or something. A tarp, a few buckets, a wheelbarrow, a hose, a machete. Those things are really, really helpful. And I wouldn't encourage anybody to try to build a Cobb house with nothing but a stick. But it is a very, very low tack technique at its root, as are all these other uh, uh, traditional building techniques. Now, what that doesn't necessarily mean is that Cobb has to be a low tack technique. And in fact, there are some limitations. There are some pretty severe limitations on treating it as exclusively a low tack technique. 
when all the mixing is the 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 majority of the work that goes into cup building is in mixing the cup that can take up to three quarters two thirds to three quarters of the labor in the in the in the building of the actual cup walls themselves there are ways pretty good ways to mechanize that so either using a tractor a technique called tractor cob using a mortar mixer in Britain, they're using just a, a heavy truck and driving back and forth over the mix and mixing it that way. So it's certainly feasible and, re and I would say reasonable to throw some kind of industrial equipment at the cob process and speed up the mixing part of the equation a lot. And I think what that enables is it enables projects to happen more quickly. It enables people who are working with a budget and a tight timeline, which most professional builders, most, most contractors are working in under those circumstances. It enables them to consider Cobb as something that they could use in their professional work. So that's, I, I'd say that's a positive, that's a positive uh, development that's happening lately in Cobb. Still haven't seen it really turn into a mainstream technique that's being used for mass, you know, mass marketing, mass housing developments. And maybe it never will. But in the meantime, I think the biggest impact that Cobb is having is allowing people who want to be building for themselves and who don't have a lot of resources or a lot of training to learn a technique quite quickly that enables them to build a really beautiful and really special uh, home for themselves.